Hello and welcome to my video on the Chunky and Chunky Border plugins. If you're running a Minecraft server and you want to handle world generation and world borders seamlessly, these two plugins are the perfect tool for you. Let's dive in. Here we are on the Chunky Spigot page and the Chunky Border Spigot page, both of which will be linked in the description below. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit download on both of these plugins. Like so. Once you have them downloaded, you're going to go to your Minecraft server, go to your plugins folder. You're going to go and you're going to drag the chunky border and your chunky plugin inside of this folder. Like so. Once you have them here, the name doesn't really matter as long as it ends in .jar. You're going to go back to the console and you're going to just restart your server. Once you've restarted the server, you should see chunky enabling chunky and then the version number that you've installed. Same goes for enabling Chunky Border. And just to verify that you have it installed, you can go to your plugins folder and you should see two new folders generated now, which is the Chunky and the Chunky Border folders. In here, you'll find the configs for each of these plugins. We don't really need to touch the Chunky folder at all, but the Chunky Border folder we will dive into a little bit later in the video. First up, let's talk about Chunky. Chunky is a world pre-generation plugin that helps you generate chunks before your players explore them. This is super useful for reducing lag during gameplay, especially on larger servers where many players are exploring at the same time. Instead of generating chunks on the fly, which can cause lag, Chunky allows you to pre-generate your world to make it smoother for everybody. Now that I'm on this server we just made, I can go ahead and I can do Chunky world and then I can choose which world we want to pre-generate. So in this case, it's gonna just be the normal world. So I'm gonna go and hit enter on this one. After you've done that, you wanna go ahead and choose your shape. If you don't choose a shape, it's gonna default to square, but let's just go ahead and choose a different shape besides square. I will go ahead and I'm gonna go do a diamond shape. After the shape, we wanna choose the center of where the generation is going to start from. I personally like to do it from zero, zero. So that's what I will do. If you don't type in coordinates here and you just do it like this, it'll center on where your character is currently standing, but I like to just set it on zero, zero. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The next step we want to do is we want to do chunky radius, and I'm going to choose a radius of a thousand blocks. And now that we've chosen all the parameters that we wanted to use, we can go ahead and we can do chunky start. And now the world is pre-generating. We don't really get to see anything live of it changing anything, but we can do chunky progress to see the status right now. So it's running for the world, which is the overworld, and it's processed 1900 chunks. We can see the ETA is about just under two minutes left and how fast it's generating chunks right now. So right now it's generating at a rate of 123 chunks per second. That's what CPS stands for. And then you can see which chunk region is currently being generated. So if I do it again, this command, it should have updated and we should see different results here. So this time it's generating at 128.1 chunks per second. And we've got a minute and 30 seconds left. Let's say I made a mistake and I didn't actually want to pre-generate this radius here. I can actually go ahead and just chunky cancel then I have to do chunky confirm. And now I've canceled all current running tasks if I was running multiple pre-generations for multiple worlds. I have a little bit of a tip for the people who has a world running for quite a while now. Let's say you have a world pre-generated in a previous Minecraft update and a new one has just released and you upgraded your server to the new version, but this new version has new world generation in it. So what you can do is you can do chunky trim and you're going to choose your world. In this case, it's the normal overworld, so it's just a world. And then we're going to do a square shape because I'm assuming most people probably pre-generate a square shape. You can choose the shape that you have yourself, of course. Then we're going to choose the center of that world, which would be zero, zero. Again, if your center is different from mine, you choose your coordinates here. Then we're going to do another zero and zero. These two zeros are basically the X and Z radius of the world. By choosing that at zero, zero, we can then do outside, which means outside of that zero, zero, which is the whole world. We trim basically the whole world. And then lastly, very important, you've obviously had players on your server playing. You don't want to delete those players chunks. So what you do is you choose a inhabited time here of zero. 
This inhabited time value basically goes up in a chunk the longer a player is inside of that chunk. If multiple players are in that chunk, it goes up faster. So having this set to zero means that no player has actually been inside of this chunk, which means it's safe to delete this chunk and allow it to regenerate a new one, which has potential for new world generation then. And I highly recommend you have a backup of your world before doing this, just in case something goes wrong. But personally, I haven't had any problems with it myself and I've used it many times when I've expanded my world on new Minecraft versions for my server. But you run the command and it's gonna give you this big warning I've basically told you. But you're gonna do chunky confirm if you really wanna go through with it. You're gonna do that and then you're gonna restart your server. And then those chunks have then been deleted and you go through the pre-generation process again after that. This is incredibly useful when you update to newer versions of Minecraft and you want new world generation in your current world without destroying other people's bases. Now, let's move on to Chunky Border, a companion plugin to Chunky, which lets you easily set world borders. And setting a world border is crucial to keeping your server performance under control, especially if you have a limited area you want players to explore, or if you're planning on pre-generating your world. To set a world border using Chunky, we just do the basically the same thing as we did before with just normal pre-generation steps. You can start by doing chunky and then you do the world you wanna set a world border for. In this case, I'm gonna do with the overworld again. And next up, we're gonna choose the chunky shape. So again, I'm gonna do a square this time just to keep it default. Now we will choose the center for our world border, which is going to be at zero, zero. And again, we're gonna do the chunky radius. Now the radius is basically the same as before. So let's say you pre-generated a radius of 200 well then my world border is also going to be 200 and now instead of doing chunky start which is what you do to pre-generate the world you're going to do chunky border and you're going to just do add this now adds a world border and you can see I got teleported here because I was outside the world border when I made that command as you can see my coordinates in the top left if I fly out here you can see my set value is going up once I reach 200 it's going to teleport me back because I've reached the world border so we're going to hit it about now and I get teleported back with a message saying you've reached the edge of this world. Now you might be wondering, I don't see a world border here and you in fact don't. We could enable the default vanilla Minecraft world border, but personally, I don't like the way it looks, especially if I was to build up close to the world border on my base. It'd just be there at all times. So Chunky Border actually has a way to add a visualization for it, which we need to head into the config file for. So I will see you guys there. Inside my plugins folder, I have the Chunky Border folder. I'm gonna go inside that and I'm gonna go into the config.yml file. If this is on your own PC, you have to open this file in a text editor like just Notepad or Notepad++, whichever one that you want to use. Inside of here, we have visualizer-enabled. I'm gonna turn this to true. And then you can choose the color of this if you want to. I'm just gonna keep it default. You can also choose at which range, like how close you are to the border, it's gonna show up. Again, I'm gonna keep it at eight, which is the default value. I'm gonna hit save. After we save the file, we go back to the console and we restart the server. After the server is restarted, we can go back inside and you should be able to see the world border. And there we go, we have the visualization and we can now see the world border. If I go a little bit away, you'll see it disappears and once I get closer, it comes up again. Now you can adjust the range, right now it's by default eight, so it's fairly close before it shows up. So if people were to build, let's say right here, close to the world border, they don't have it in their face the whole time, which is what I personally prefer instead of using the default Minecraft world border feature. Some people may of course prefer the vanilla Minecraft world border because it physically blocks players from going past it. This one kind of lets you go a little bit past it and then teleports you back. But another downside to using the Minecraft vanilla world border is that it's only going to fit in a square world. Say you generated a triangle or a star world, then this visualization from Chunky Borders would actually work for that, whereas the Minecraft default world border would not work. Going back into the Chunky Border config file, there's a few more config options I didn't touch on before. First one is the message. This is the message you get when you reach the world border. You can customize this to however you want. In my case, I would like to change the text font, basically. Same text, just different font. So I'll do that. Now it's the uppercase small font. Don't actually know the name of it. I'm just doing it to demonstrate that you can change it. You can also make it so it uses or doesn't use the action bar. By default, it uses the action bar when you go to the world border. If you disable this, it's gonna show in the chat. I personally prefer it showing on the action bar so it's not to 
spam the chat for the player. The effect that happens when you reach the world border and the sound you can change. Now the next three options here, I actually think should be turned to true by default. I'm not sure why it's not, but basically prevent mob spawns basically means it's gonna prevent all mobs from spawning outside of the world border. Why would you want your mobs to spawn outside the world border? It makes no sense, the players can't go out there anyway, so I'm gonna turn that to true. And prevent ender pearl means that players who throw an ender pearl outside the world border, it's just gonna cancel it and not land and teleport the player. So let's turn that to true. And the same thing goes with chorus root. If someone eats a chorus root at the border and it was supposed to teleport them past the world border, it will not work. So I'm turning that to true. I didn't really touch much on the visualized color. If you are not aware, this is a hex color. So you need to provide it a different hex color if you want to change it. Lastly, we have some map options for the different map plugins there are. You can change the label. You can make it so it hides by default and you can change the color. If you take a look at my server's map, you can see that I have a red square here. This indicates the world border. And if I click on it, you can see that the label is world border just like it was in the config file. And that's it for today's video. I hope this guide on chunky and chunky border was helpful. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more plugin tutorials. Let me know in the comments what plugins you'd like to see next or if you have any questions about chunky or chunky border. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.